Uh, the aim of this video is to teach capacitors, capacitors and capacitors. Right? So we can start off with the capacitors. A capacitor is any device that stores charge and capacitors also store energy. It consists of two conducting plates separated by an insulator and it has many applications which include uh, the computer, memory, and keyboards, electronic flashes or cameras, electric power stage protectors, radios and electronic circuits. Right. Now, we have got two types of capacitors that we are going to be looking at. Parallel plate capacitor and the cylindrical capacitor. Now, a cylindrical capacitor is a parallel plate capacitor that has been rolled up with a, uh, within an insulating layer between the plates, like a sandwich. Now, capacitors uh, in electronic circuits, they are represented in the form of uh, two parallel lines. So the side that is connected or the plate that is connected to the positive terminal of the battery will accumulate positive charges. And the side that is connected to the negative terminal of the battery will accumulate negative uh, charges. And the symbol for the capacitor is that one, C and uh, with the battery connection like that. The charge that is stored in between is Q. That's the symbol that we give. So we have plus Q on this side, minus Q on this side. And the formula for capacitance is governed uh, from this formula, which is Q is equal to CV, which means uh, capacitance would be equal to the ratio of the charge stored to the potential difference across the plates. Now, to explain how this comes about, like to have the positive charges on this side and negative charges on this side, we have electrons that move from the negative terminal of the battery and then start accumulating on the, this plate, see, which is on the right hand side. Now, the electrons that will be on this plate here will then be repelled off to the battery. And this then creates positive charges on the because you have a deficiency of uh, uh, negative charges. Now the work done in getting the electrons to be accumulating on this plate here against the repulsive forces of the electrons that have already accumulated will be equal to the electrical energy that's going to be stored between the plates of the capacitor. That is why at first we said that uh, capacitors store energy. So that's how they store the energy. Now the stored charge, like I said, is proportional to the potential difference V between the plates and the capacitance C uh, is the constant of, uh, we can just say it is a constant if we are saying that Q is directly proportional to, to V. And capacitance is measured in farads. So this is a simple parallel plate capacitor and the electric field that's going to be set up in between uh, is given by the potential V divided by the separation of the plates D. Right, so this is uh, so the construction of a capacitor. So we have two metal plates separated by insulating material and that's the same construction. This is structure shown here. Right, I'm going to skip this one. And then we're going to talk about the graphical presentation of capacitance. So like I said, if a graph of charge stored against potential difference is plotted, you're going to find that it doesn't have any y-intercept. It is straight.
straight from the origin. So it means there's a direct proportion between charge stored and potential difference. And the gradient giving us the capacitance, which is our C. So here it's in the form Y is equal to MX. So M corresponds to C, which is our capacitance. Now, the capacitance of an isolated body, if you consider an isolated conducting sphere of radius R uh, carrying charge Q, the potential at the surface is given by that. I think this is covered in my lesson on uh, electric fields, right? V is equal to Q over 4 pi epsilon naught R. Now, uh, epsilon naught is the permittivity of free space. Now we know that C is equal to Q over V. Now substituting for this V into this equation, you will find that the, the Q's are going to cancel out and then you end up with C is equal to Q, uh, so C is equal to 4 pi epsilon naught R. So which means the capacitance of an isolated uh, sphere is proportional to the radius of the sphere. Now, we move on to the practical zero of potential. The capacitance of the earth of radius 6.4 times 10 to the power 6 meters is uh, uh, given by that, which, is, which ends up with 700 microfarads, which is a very, very large capacitance. Because here we have taken the earth as uh, an isolated sphere with that capacitance 4 pi epsilon naught R. So we get this 700 microfarads. So when a charged conductor is earthed by touching it, it loses most of its charge to the earth. But the change in potential of the earth is negligible due to its large capacitance. The conductor acquires uh, its potential. So the earth's potential is taken to be the practical zero of potential. Uh, capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor. Now, a sphere of radius R carrying a charge Q has a surface charge density sigma given by charge density is equal to charge over area, right? Now, the surface area of a sphere is 4 pi R squared. So, which means the electric field strength will be equal to Q over 4 pi epsilon naught R squared, again found in my lesson on the electric field. Now, if we are to remove epsilon naught from this formula of electric field strength, we find that you get this. electric field strength times epsilon naught give you Q over 4 pi R squared, which is the same as sigma, which is our charge our density, charge over surface area there. So, which means the charge density is equal to the electric field strength times the epsilon naught, which is the permittivity of free space. Now, for a parallel plate capacitor, which has uh, plates of area A, we have electric field strength being equal to charge over the area times uh, epsilon naught, like what we've uh, shown. Now, since the separation of the plates, these are parallel plates, is D, and the potential between the plates is V, then V over D is our electric field strength, and it is given by Q over A epsilon naught. So which means the capacitance C will be equal to Q over V, which will be epsilon naught A over D. So this is the uh, formula for capacitance of uh, a parallel plate capacitor. So the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor is C is equal to epsilon naught A over D. Where epsilon naught is our primitivity of free space, like I said, and A is the area of the plates, D is the separation of the plates. So it means if the plates are close to each other, the capacitance is very large. If the plates are far away from each other, the capacitance is very small. Now, energy stored by a capacitor, we say that work is going to be done. Uh, in charging up a capacitor because you are adding, electrons are being added to the same plate and is, this is being done 
there is going to be repulsion between these electrodes. Now, the, the force of repulsion between the plates and the plating, those arriving at the plate, uh, is the one that causes this. And now the work that is going to be done to overcome these repulsive forces is going to be equal to the energy that's going to be stored between the plates. Now, generally, we know that energy stored is equal to, or energy supplied by a power supply is, is equal to charge times the voltage. Now, from our graph, we show that, or we, we, show, we, we saw that the graph is one that starts from the origin and it's a straight line. The area underneath it is a triangle. So, the energy that's going to be stored is going to be equal to half Q times V. So it means the other half of this energy that is being supplied is going to be wasted off as it. So as you can see here. So we're going to get E is equal to half QV. The other half of the energy is going to be wasted away as it. Now, since we know that Q is equal to CV, uh, we can substitute for Q here, and then we get CV squared. So energy stored is also equal to half CV squared, or you can substitute for V in the equation for capacitance, and then you find the energy, energy, energy stored being equal to half Q squared over C.